All right, let's get into some of this stuff that uh, we alluded to. The, the, Josh Donaldson's had a really interesting last 48 hours just fighting not only White Sox pitchers and Giolito through the media, but let's let's play a couple clips here. So we've had we had Donaldson sort of taunting Giolito um, a couple nights ago, and then Giolito's response in the Zoom press conference after the game, and then Donaldson said, yeah, I actually uh, met him in the parking lot, old school style. Oh, so Donaldson. let's hear from Josh Donaldson here. He didn't have really much to say. You know, he, he said that he thought it was annoying. I said, so what? I'm on the opposing team. What do you care about me? And I said, I'm in your face. I'm telling you what I, what I think. What do you got to say about that? And he didn't have any response. <laughs> Hold let's, on. Keep, let's keep going. Hold on. This is amazing. He said, I wish he'd say it to my face, right? Well, I did say it to his face. We, we, we had a talk last night. And let's just, let's just be quite frank with this. He didn't have much to say. <laughs> One more. Well, guess what? Mr. Giolito, your fastball spin rate's down 200. Your curveball spin rate's down four, 500. Your slider's down 200. So, look, if we're going to talk about class, are we going to? Are we, what side are you going to choose? Are you are you going to speak, uh, take the side of someone who's playing the game fair, or are you going to take the side of somebody that was probably cheating before this happened? So that was the greatest Zoom press conference in the history of pandemic press conferences. Yes. This was yesterday. like 18 minutes of unplugged Donaldson. It At was one point fantastic. he went after Ozzy Guillen because Guillen, oh, yeah. Guillen said on the White Sox post game show Hit him. that hey, you should throw a fastball into his ribs. And Donaldson mm-hmm. brought the receipts of Ozzy's career OPS, OPS. and his Fidel pro Fidel Castro and comments. He was right. And he was right. But but Josh's point was a, a lot of people are talking bleep about me. And I'm a guy who's won an MVP and been to three All Star games. They quickly forget how good I am. It was, yeah. I mean, it was great, great theater for like 18 minutes of unplugged Josh. Yeah. So sorry, I'm going to shut this so this dog doesn't uh, derail this Big amazing, eat. amazing Josh Donaldson comment. So dog might have um, these come out. Jeb was on this was was monitoring the Zoom, and these come out, and I think like all three of us were kind of in harmony. Yeah, this is this is amazing. It, first, it's it's entertaining. Yes. Josh Donaldson makes baseball fun for one thing, um, but I saw a lot of reaction that was sort of the opposite, which is, you know, he is being over the top and classless. And even like, you know, Judd had this take yesterday and, you know, you need to just sort of shut your mouth when you're 12 or 13 games back. And it all culminated with an article that was posted last night that I want to touch on for a second here. But I have come to the conclusion the last 24 to 48 hours that through the this crappy twin season and this pandemic, whatever the recipe is, that we have apparently all just lost our minds when it comes to this baseball team and looking at it, okay? So the Twins, are, let's go through the list here real quick. The Twins are 13 games back. Their pitching staff has given up the second most runs in baseball because all of the team's offseason acquisitions have flopped. They just DFA'd Matt Shoemaker here uh, about five minutes ago. Miguel Sano, supposed to be one of the centerpieces of this franchise. He's a bench player now. He's a platoon bench player. Max mm-hmm. Kepler, supposed to be a centerpiece of this franchise. He's been one of the worst players for the Twins the last two seasons, right? Mm-hmm. All of these things, and there's more, by the way, like all these things to focus on and to criticize and to put under a microscope. Meanwhile, Josh Donaldson's out here. He's calling out cheating pitchers, hitting bombs off cheating pitchers, and generally showing a level of spark and passion that people have craved from this ball club for years and years, right? I mean, people criticize Joe Maurer, who I think is a Hall of Famer, because he didn't show enough passion, right? The the, 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 the Twins, if they want to beat the Yankees, you just need to show more fire and passion. That was, that's been a discussion for years in this town. And through all of this, right, Josh Donaldson's out here just fighting cheating pitchers and hitting bombs, and he's like one of the only good things about this year's Twins team. And all these other things are going off the rails. And we get this article from the esteemed twinsdaily.com yesterday. Is Josh Donaldson one of the all-time least likable Twins players? 
Josh Donaldson was brought to Minnesota to help push a winning team to the next level. Instead, he's been part of multiple regrettable moments, and he might be one of the all-time least likable Twins players. Honestly, if you look at the last three months of Twins baseball, and I get so Donaldson was hurt last year, and his presence might have made a difference in the playoffs, and I'll grant you that. Like His injury history came back to bite everyone involved last year. He's been mostly healthy this year. He's been largely productive this year. He's hitting bombs. He's showing the same fire and emotion that everyone knew he has shown at every stop, whether it's Cleveland or Atlanta or Toronto or Oakland. Like This is who he's been as an MVP, as an injured player. Regardless, this is who he's been for 10 years. And he's bringing all of those things to this year's Twins team. And he's one of like a small handful of things that are actually showing life on this team. Mm -hmm. And we're criticizing him? He's calling out cheating pitchers and hitting bombs off of them and showing fire. And we're criticizing him and saying that he's not likable. Oh, he's just like, he needs to pump the brakes and cool it. Honestly, if you think Josh Donaldson's a problem for this team, you deserve a losing baseball team. That's my take on it. I'm just like so sick of all these other things you could focus on. And Josh Donaldson's the one that we're going to throw under the bus. Give me a break. Well, I think what's also weird about it in this market is the amount of defending that goes on of players who aren't mm -hmm. good and that that's what that's what makes this odd now my only problem with donaldson is the team sucks and he was chirping and look he is on his own personal crusade and i actually admire this part to clean up the game um and as far as i know he is the only player out there who's continually basically like at times naming names he, he said he's got a, a list of 150 pitchers who from 2000 uh, 17 until now their spin rates had improved had gone up and mm -hmm. and like he he flat out said i'm he's got like a book because he said i'm not naming names but i've got a list of guys mm -hmm. so like this is his own personal crusade and and it actually that's ballsy I, like that takes guts he's calling out people within his yeah. own league and dude, so think, think about like like all of that that you just said and and then he hits a bomb off giolito and, and essentially just stands there with really no backing from, like, it's not like anyone was backing him. He was just out in front, figuratively, in front of the entire White Sox on the road. And he's taunting them through a Zoom press conference call. And he's doing all this stuff. Like, that was a pregame press conference that you just saw. That yeah. was a pre he, and he wanted to do he, it. Pregame. And he walks up to the plate. And these pitchers are holding rocks in their hands and throw them 95 miles an hour. And with zero fear, this dude steps in and hits another bomb. Like and bat flip. Come, yes. And admires dude, it too. He should which, be by the way, celebrated. He is a national treasure for but, God's sakes. But my problem is this team stinks. And what I would really like him to start doing, unprompted, is calling out his team too. Like that. That's what I want. I want him to turn on the whole flipping thing because it's driving me crazy. <laughs> but like I, I'm coming down on every part of this team. And I feel like our show is a, as well. And it doesn't feel like the market a, as a whole is doing justice. I mean, Miguel Sano is a part-time player now, and now it's, it's gone from, you don't, he he's the next killer brew. You don't get it to, okay, let's ignore that. Let's shove that below. I mean, how many people are <laughs> tweeting about this or talking about this? He's a part-time player. He's a platoon player. This is a huge deal. There are so many guys on this team who are awful. And again, this all comes back to, it's an unlikable team now. I don't even know why, but they are. Um, but my only criticism with Donaldson was your team sucks and you're chirping about the, the home run. And he said, and here, here's my, here's my big problem. He said, and I believe this, that he was saying it's not sticky to like, try and get the team going, but he should say, <laughs> you guys suck so bad. You got no chance. You got no chance to do what I did. So just screw you. So that, but as far as his crusade now, and, and as far as his personality and this zoom press conference, it was all fantastic. I love yeah. that stuff. That's fun. He speaks his mind. You know what? And Phil, you're right. You signed this guy knowing the price of poker. This was a guy who almost started a bench clearing ball a brawl with Glenn Perkins over a foul ball. Okay. So like Glenn, this is not Glenn, Glenn started it. In fairness, Glenn well, chirped. No, Donald, Glenn chirped. Yeah, but Donaldson admired a foul ball, which is very Donaldson like. And then Glenn yeah. chirped. But the point being is, you knew exactly what you were getting here, and you know what? We welcomed that part. And so, like now to be, he's un unlikable. As a person uh, in the comments to the to the uh, piece that you're talking about on Twins Daily said, if you don't have Ricky Nolasco atop your list, you ain't doing the right list. Now he might be controversial. Donaldson is controversial. He might be brash. He's brash. I mean, he's basically 
a latter day Dan Gladden. He's Gladden. Gladden was the same exact way. He would chirp yeah. you for and and look if Gladden if Gladden was around t- today, he'd be pulling the same stunts. Gladden drove to a teammate's house and beat him up on his own front lawn. Yeah. Also, like, so. li- like who but who cares about likable? I mean, let's face it. Let's be real. The most famous and likable player in Twins history, Kirby Puckett, has a pretty dark personal life history. Mm-hmm. All right. So we can sit here and talk about likability. But I just I, I tweeted this last night too. I'd love to see a Venn diagram of people that destroyed Joe Maurer for never showing enough passion and leadership and bite and the same people who also take issue with this. He said, I wish he'd say it to my face, right? Well, I did say it to his face. We 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 had a talk last night. And let's just let's just be quite frank with this. He didn't have much to say. I mean, how can you how not want that on your team? Are the, you kidding me? The t-shirt. You got something to say? Oh, he's my king. Dude, inject this into my well, vein. Guess what? Mr. Giolito, your fastball spin rate's down 200. Your curveball spin rate's down four, 500. Your slider's down 200. So, look. If we're going to talk about class, are we going to? Are we, what side are you going to choose? Are you are you going to speak, uh, take the side of someone who's playing the game fair, or are you going to take the side of somebody that was probably cheating before this happened? Dude, yep. I'm I'm giddy listening to these quotes. Well, and like, he also, come I, on, I give him credit. He brings the receipts as well. Yeah, like <laughs> like he's got his facts straight. Like he's not making Dude. stuff up. He looks stuff up. He is. I mean, the, I, I think the most interesting thing about his presence is the fact that it. And I, I am not using this word lightly. He is on a crusade. Like he's on a crusade yeah, to clean up the game. And, and I don't think that there's a lot of players, unless I've missed it, uh, who are doing this. And if they are, they're being quiet about it. I, well, I mean, this guy is call, calling out. Phil, to your point, this guy is calling out continually the very people that could throw a ball at his head. Uh, that, that's that, what you just said is it. Like the reason why you don't, well, there's two reasons why you don't do it. Number one, your own pitchers are also the same pitchers that you're on a crusade against are also like make up half of your teammate base. But, but <laughs> most more, of them right? stink and he knows it. And that's what I sort of love about it. Right. Uh, but like he's doing this. I I know they got smoked last night and I know that his home run was the basically the end of the twins feel good vibes last night. <laughs> but he talked all of that trash and all of it was accurate it was factual and and it was like his whole mission is i'm going to eradicate cheating among pitchers right that's his mission and he does this all before the game on the road hostile environment and that pitcher could throw a fastball at your earlobe and end your season right he has no fear of it no fear like he no. walked up and hit a bomb and admired it and dropped his bat and walked backwards out of the batter's box. Like how you can consume all of that over the last couple of days and think anything other than, man, the twins need more of that. The twins need guys who can hit, hit like JD. The twins need guys who can show some attitude and some fight like JD. Am I saying he's this great behind the scenes leader? No, I mean, he, maybe he is kind of a pariah. Maybe he is a little bit, I don't. I'm. I'm not in the clubhouse, and we haven't had access, quite frankly, to the clubhouse since he's been here. Mm-hmm. So you know, maybe there's. I, you know, I sense, based on the way that he has been covered this season, and it's been through kind of a critical tone throughout a lot of different publications. It feels to me like he ruffles feathers behind the scenes, and that sure. that starts to leak out. But you know what? I brought this up yesterday or two days ago. Barry Bonds ruffled a lot of feathers, and his team has won a lot of games and almost won a World Series in 2002 at the peak of his Barry Bondsness. Right, like baseball is a sport of mercenaries. It's not. It's not like the NBA or NHL where it's a it's a bunch. It's a symbiotic relationship and play calling and scheming in football. It's it's a series of one on one matchups, and if your hitter can beat that pitcher on a regular basis, like Josh Donaldson has throughout his career, then I want that guy on my team. 99 times out of 100. And if you internally as a team and especially front office have a problem with him, that's a you problem 
because again, you knew exactly who you were getting. Like, there's nothing he is doing that I'm like, oh my god, I didn't see this coming. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. He, like I, if like if Kepler did started yes, doing this, exactly and be like, where's right. this coming from? Exactly What's happening? right. If if a guy like Kepler went off, I'd be like, well, this is really out out of character. That's weird. And you yeah. know what? That might be a we got to sit him down and talk to him thing. But Josh Donaldson, you signed him for this purpose, just because I didn't like one thing because i'm mad at the entire team rightfully so um doesn't mean that i'm like well i also didn't see that coming and you know that's a shocker he is yeah. doing he is doing exactly what you expected and if they are now saying well yeah but i mean i don't know about this that's your problem that that's your fault and that's another and also that's another misjudgment by you which is and at the end of this year i'm very curious Who's going to do the um, evaluation, the employee evaluation on Falvey, Levine, Rocco? Who gets to do that? Because there's been a lot of stuff. I'm sorry. We've seen. I'm not saying no one's going to be fired. And I'm not, just to be clear, I'm not calling for heads here. Uh, but we also have seen things that can't be ignored. Mm -hmm. Well, I, you know, I said this when Doogie was on here for the scoop segment, but I'll, it's worth reiterating. The Twins have given up the second most runs in baseball this year. They gave up another double-digit number last night. And just under half of the runs they've given up are credited to Matt Shoemaker, dfa this morning, Jay Happ, Alex Colome, Hansel Robles. All Those were the four main free agent pitching signings. And Randy Dobnak, who signed that long-term extension, didn't break the bank, but like he's right. ironclad signed through 2025 with a couple team options after, and he's been mostly unpitchable for the Twins. Mm -hmm. And with some of the other you know minor moves that whiffed throughout the offseason, um, boy, like it's it's really hard to give them full benefit of the doubt that this is just a blip bad season. Also, we're five years in, and there are definitely some pitching prospects still on the horizon, but like, is it just the mirage on the horizon of the desert that – there's always just going to be like three or four guys on the horizon that are going to come save the right. day. And ultimately, you're standing in the desert still. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. it's been five years. Where's the pitching? Right. Where well, is and, it? And, and the, thing, the thing is, I'm not saying where's the pitching from a standpoint of why didn't you go out and sign high profile guys? I'm saying it from a standpoint yes. of you were supposed to develop it. Like, like, it's not it's not that a guy like the shoe shouldn't have been, been here because you went out and signed a superior free agent pitcher, right? It's that where was the guy that you developed who was in double A a couple of years back and emerged now? And yep. it and they just don't I mean, the thing is it, it's just it boggles my mind when I see what they've done that they haven't stumbled across like two guys like that. Yep. And they haven't. Yeah. So, man, I don't know. I, I just need to inject this one more time here. Just yep. one more time. Well, guess what? Mr. Giolito, your fastball spin rate's down 200. Your curveball spin rate's down four 500. Your slider's down 200. So, look, if we're going to talk about class, are we going to – what side are you going to choose? Are you, are you going to uh, take the side of someone who's playing the game – fair or are you going to take the side of somebody that was probably cheating before this happened he went and found him in the parking lot <laughs> i mean just let's I think about him. that for a second let's just talk about that for a second <laughs> he said i happen he said something like i happen to see him in the park bull crap Dude. he went and waited him out in the players parking lot lot on the south side of chicago <laughs> It's true. Like, like right, I don't feel right, like right. we're that's giving a, full appreciation to the Jets and Sharks mentality of Donaldson. He's on the south side of Chicago, and he told the team to either wait. I don't know what he did, <laughs> but he's like, I'm going to go into the players' parking lot and wait him out, and that's what he did, and you know he did that. I love it, man. Dex, any final thoughts from you here before we get to he, old he's, tweets uh, exposed? He's my king. He's absolutely my king. I, I love this kind of demeanor. Minnesota sports needs this kind of guy. I get that at the end of the day, uh, oh, well, can Josh Donaldson pitch? No, he can't pitch. There are other ways to go about us addressing why your pitching has failed. But if, if you're not recognizing how important his impact is to this team and 
how much us in Minnesota are just so passive aggressive and we want guys to be quiet and work hard, but then we call out Joe Mowers and we call out the guys for not showing enough passion or we or we, we complain about Kirk Cousins always throwing blame against other people, never taking it on himself, and then Josh Donaldson just gives an Oscar performance and we're like, oh, well, I don't care about that because this team sucks and this, 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 and that. Dude, reevaluate your priorities. Seriously, my but, God. But I think people care about it. I think that they were offended by what he said, which is even better. So, like, I, I think they were actually taken aback by the fact that this is a very, I don't know. It, it, I want I want JD on the left wing of the third line for the Wild <laughs> next season. Yeah, he does he have will, hockey vibes. He's he got will big time beat hockey the vibes. crap out of you. Yeah, he big, big time he'll hockey He'll be good, but vibes. he'll also beat you up. He will go in the corners. Yeah. All right. Declan presents every single week here a trip through the Twitter archives, going through and exposing all of the uh, wrong and off base mm-hmm. and hot takey things we have tweeted throughout the last decade plus. So we'll see who takes the the crown this week. Let's do it. All right. So, you know, we've been talking a lot about Ben Simmons uh, over the last like few weeks now. We just had Doogie on giving out trade ideas. And, you know, you know could, could you get him without D'Lo? You know, he's, he's kind of... Uh, Falling off from grace a little bit. Still a good player. Still a very good player. But um, I want to bring a tweet to the table from 2018 from Phil Mackey. Uh, It was a Chris Mannix quote tweet. And he says, you're the GM of an expansion team. You have your choice of any NBA player or Brad Stevens. Who do you choose? Man, I think I choose Ben Simmons. But this is a tough question. Stevens is magic. Three years (laughs) later, Phil Mackey, if you could take any player... Would it be Ben Simmons? <laughs> um, wow. So many things are wrong about this because Stevens is, is not as magic as people true. thought. He's no longer going to be coaching. Yeah, he he's a good, up, he, he got kicked upstairs. He's a good coach. He's a good coach, but he's not magic. Yep. And I think I said Ben Simmons just because of all the hype coming out of college and because he was under team control, you know, for a pretty cheap deal sure. until he signed the max. But yeah, this was. Uh, now, I, now, if he had said, you are the GM of an expansion team and you have to choose Ben Simmons or Brad Stevens, and it right. was only a choice, but, but he's giving the choice of any, any NBA player in 2018, and I chose Ben Simmons, that's pretty bad. Yeah. That's pretty aggressive. Phil's got a lead. Leader yeah, in the clubhouse here, for sure. Yeah. All right, Mr. Judd Zolgad, uh, you've been conglomerating for more uh, Nick Gordon, and rightfully so. I, I want Nick Gordon to play more. You know, sure. I, I think uh, he deserves night, more playing time. Darn near Robbed a little, a little center field in his game. You know, he's yep. a little slap hitter. He's probably not going to hit very much power, but he can steal some bases and play some good defense. Mm-hmm. Uh, but on March 20th, 2020, 21, watching Andrelton Simmons play shortstop for the Twins this season is going to be a treat for fans. <laughs> yep. It's such a treat. Yep, I thought it was it's such going a to treat. Be. Well, and, and you know uh, what? He is he cool. is fun to watch play shortstop, but he serves no purpose here being on a crappy team. <laughs> Listen, I have I have plenty of incriminating Andrelton Simmons uh, excited tweets from when they signed him, and I and I, I was excited about him, Colome, and not excited about Hap, but I understood the Hap signing because Hap's yeah, a, yeah. So he's a, been a good solid pitcher. Uh, Andrelton Simmons, if you start to dig into the data here, he has had one of the worst defensive. Uh, I'm not going to say offense. He's always been kind of a mediocre offensive player. But he's had one of the better or one of the worst defensive seasons of his career at shortstop. So he has been anything but a treat. Started opening day. Air on opening day. Oh, I see what you're saying. He made a bad throw, right? No, he, no, he dropped a ball at Milwaukee. He dropped the mm-hmm. ball from yeah. Sano. That's what it was. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I'm going to break my rule a little bit. Instead of a tweet, I'm going to use a Facebook status that came okay. across my timeline Uh Two or three days ago, and I saved it. Um, oh boy! Yeah, June 29, two thousand eleven. Gotta love Scott <laughs> Baker. Just my oh, my right, ridiculous love I for love, Scott I, Baker. I love looking at the like the game logs for these. So this is June twenty so, ninth. June twenty ninth. So yeah, he probably this was either the night of a start or the day yep. after a start, or maybe I was just drunk here? after. And you this know, is the it's happening. Grand party run, happening. Right, yeah, this, this is this smack is, dab in the middle of the it's happening run. It's happening run. Yep. Okay. So uh, so, Scott, those t-shirts and Scott, up. And Scott Baker was pretty damn good in 2011 before his arm fell off. He was a pretty good pitcher. That's Scott Baker was a good pitcher. That's, that's I, actually I liked, very true. I liked Scott Baker. Yeah, oh, you man. Wrong, but you weren't oh, wrong. Oh, man. Okay. Wow, dude. So Scott Baker, this was, again, this is right in the middle of, like, the Twins had been the best team in baseball at this point for about a month. 
and they're clawing their way back into this thing. June 29th, 2011, it was a home series against the Dodgers. If you remember, I think they lost the first game of that series like 15 to nothing or something mm -hmm. coming out. And then it was because they had a little losing streak in there. They had, they had lost like a bunch of games to Milwaukee and I think the Dodgers to kind of derail the it's happening. But then they climbed right back on the horse and they beat the Dodgers one to nothing. And Scott Baker went seven and a third, no earned runs, no runs uh, allowed at all, and nine strikeouts in seven and a third, 119 pitches, which you would never see a Twins pitcher get up to. Oh my God! In 2021, <laughs> just an absolute horse of a start for Scott Baker. So you know what? It's kind of funny because Scott Baker is a little bit of a punchline, but he's underrated. Yeah, he was excellent on June 29th of 2000. 11. So, Dex, we're going to get your. I think you're in the clear on oh, that. Oh, I've one. got my vote. It's me, isn't it? Phil Mackey wins. You all took right. you took Ben Simmons. I mean, of all the players in the NBA, yeah. literally. Of like all the players. Giannis, LeBron, even LeBron. Le Why Steph. didn't I choose LeBron or Durant? Durant. And there, Ben there Simmons. Is. Chris Paul. You must, you must have been thinking financially. You must have been thinking with the rookie contract or something. Or I was, yeah, I, I, I just. Or yeah, it was you love Brad Stevens, too. Had a couple Stevens, you were, fingers of bourbon in, yeah, I don't know. You were starstruck. You're stars in your eyes. I need, uh, I just need this one more time here. He, he said, I wish he'd say it to my face, right? Well, I did say it to his face. We, we, we had a talk last night. And let's just, let's just be quite frank with this. He didn't have much to say. I mean, <laughs> John's got the bat. <laughs> Lucas, what's oh, going on, man? God, dude. It's Seriously. like a Soprano oh, scene. And we're like going to drive this guy out of town. We're going to drive this guy out of town. Yep. He makes well, us too he's uncomfortable. Not likeable. He's not likable enough for me. He makes us too uncomfortable. I, I want likable people. I want mm -hmm. nice people. What You know what I, what I was thinking about last night as I rested my head on my pillow after seeing that Twins Daily Post? I'm like, Josh Donaldson's very prominent on social media. He's probably going to see this and just be done. Like, he's just going to think, oh, yeah, screw the Twins. Oh, he'll respond. Well, he's I'm not saying, like, he's, he's just going to, like, not want to play here anymore. Like, I want him to play here. If he's going to be healthy and play, like, I, I want him to play here next year. You're uh, not going to get anything for him. No one's going to eat the contract. You might as well just keep him on the team. And, you know, when we react in the way that we react to his fire, he's probably not going to want to play here. So oh. He will. Uh, I'd love to see him respond, though. Yep. Wouldn't you? Trevor Plouffe responded. <laughs> yeah, like Trevor it was Plouffe great. gave like a like a puzzled gif like you got you serious, the friday gif yeah it was great i love all, right. all right we got to go before judd beats us over the head in the parking yeah, lot with this bad here. i got my all dodgers right. mini bat out yeah. thanks Come for on, hanging Lucas. out with us on mackie and judd and don't forget uh rom-com rewind on the show tomorrow daily mm. minnesota sports entertainment and we want championships as far away as they seem for this twins ball club <laughs>